Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. You know, when I made the video of the UHQR of Gaucho uh, and put it up um, on the YouTube channel, I didn't think within a week that more than 90,000 people would, would see that and listen to it. That was That's amazing. And it's still growing. It's like viral or something. And I didn't put it up there as clickbait. But I think, I mean, some people went there because they wanted to hear it. And other people went there to, to look at a $370,000 turntable for the same reason that they look at videos of plane crashes and car crashes. It's like, look at that guy spending $370,000 on a turntable. Well, I didn't spend $370,000 on a turntable. I reviewed it. But I'd like to spend $370,000 on that turntable. But, you know. Anyway, uh, that GMT-1 Wilson Banish turntable is out of the house. Uh, but before I shipped it away... I made a few more recordings that I'm going to share with you. And the first one is a transfer of the original pressing of Lou Reed's Transformer album, which came out in November of 1972. And so this let's is talk about this album just for a minute. Uh, everybody knows Lou Reed's Transformer album produced by David Bowie and Mick Ronson. I mean, the real genius behind this record was Mick Ronson's arrangements. Mick, Mick Ronson was a really, really good arranger and talented musician and a really nice man because I got to spend some time with him on the airplane when I was covering uh, the Ziggy Stardust tour or, or being part of it for Fusion Magazine. And that was really a fun trip, I can tell you. And, and uh, David Bowie was very insular. You hardly saw him, saw him at, at meals. But uh, I sat next to to Mick Ronson on the plane, and the most nice, approachable, down-to-earth guy, and it's just, it's so sad that he got cancer and, and passed away. But he's the arranging genius on this record, recorded uh, with David Bowie producing it, and Mick Ronson co-producing at Trident Studios in London, and it's a fantastic sounding record. And it was mixed by Ken Scott, and, and uh, Mike Stone, and Lou Reed, and David Bowie, and Mick Ronson at Trident, and uh, so let's let's talk about thin records versus thick records. You know, this we get 180 gram records now for the most part, and you know, cynics say 180 gram records is a, is a scam. You don't need it. A thin record is just as good. And of course, back when this was uh, new, there was an oil shortage, and so and you know, RCA was touting Dynaflex as an improvement, but in reality probably a lot of it was because there was an oil shortage so they wanted to make the available pvc go longer uh but people who say bad things about these thin records uh are wrong because these can sound fantastic but so can the thick ones and there's a reason why thicker is better uh it's all other things being equal so when a stylus is in the groove of a record it's a tiny little point that's in there. So it's tracking maybe a two grams, but per square inch, it's a huge amount of weight. And as it goes through the record, as it spins through the record, the amount of vibrational energy that's released in that spot where the stylus is going is, is enormous. And that vibrational energy is, is going back and forth within the grooves of the record because whether it's a thick record or a thin record, a lot of it's been cut away by the cutting stylus. So there's a lot of open space in there actually and so, uh, if you don't um, damp the record on the platter, those vibrations will go through the platter and reach the stylus and add, you know, ghost information to the record. So it's really important, regardless of the thickness of your record, to use a clamp or a weight. It can be light; it doesn't matter. Just something that that makes sure that the record is um, firmly onto the platter. So you you prevent those vibrations from happening. Um, this thin record sounds incredible, as you will hear. This is an original pressing, and this was pressed at the uh, at RCA's Rockaway, New Jersey facility, uh, because there's an R on there, and this is... So you can hear Walk on the Wild Side, and remember, this record is from 1972. It's been played a lot. And Walk on the Wild Side is the final track on the side. This is where records are supposed to distort and sound all horrible. And, you know, if you play them back correctly and they were properly cut, you shouldn't hear any distortion. So let's listen to uh, Walk on the Wild Side from an original uh, American pressing on Dynaflex vinyl. 
uh, on the Wilson Benesh GMT-1 turntable that costs $370,000. And listen to how it sounds. Okay, here we go. Holly came from Miami, FLA Hitchhiked away across USA Plucked her eyebrows on the way Shaved her legs and then he was a she She says, hey babe, take a walk on the wild side Said, hey honey, take a walk on the wild side Candy came from out on the island In the back room she was everybody's darling But she never lost her head Even when she was given head She says, hey babe, take a walk on the wild side Said, hey babe, take a walk on the wild side And the colored girls go do 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 Little Joe never once gave it away Everybody had to pay and pay A hustle here and a hustle there New York City is the place where they said Hey babe, take a walk on the wild side I said, hey Joe, take a walk on the wild side Sugar Pump Fairy came and hit the streets Looking for soul food and a place to eat Went to the Apollo You should have seen him go, go, go They said, hey sugar, take a walk on the wild side I said, hey babe, take a walk on the wild side All right Ha! Huh. Jackie is just speeding away Thought she was James Dean for a day Then I guess she had to crash Valium would have helped that fast I said, hey babe, take a walk on the wild side I said, hey honey, take a walk on the wild side And the colored girls say Do, 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 do Thank <laughs> you.